She was found dead after being stabbed 12 times on the right side of her neck deep in the Gai forest. But who could have done this? Liz Impofo was a 33-year-old mother of two and she was separated from her estranged husband Edmo Nyamazana who was 35 years of age. Lizzie was from Gai and Edmo was from Nyamazana village under Chitunjendele in Gokwe. Their relationship had been toxic so she decided in early 2009 to move out of their Gokwe home and move in with her father at his homestead in Gai. The main cause of their conflict was Edmo's infidelity and she could not take it anymore. Edmo would come and visit his children at their grandfather's compound in Gai once in a blue moon. On the 2nd of December 2011, Lizzie decided to attend a church service with her friend Sam Kiriso Sivanda a few kilometers away from their village in Gai. They were worshipping, dancing and singing when suddenly she saw Edmo far off in the crowd. She was very surprised to see him but she automatically assumed that he had come to see his children which every mother appreciates. She then approached him and greeted him and asked him what he was doing at her church and he said that he had not come to just see his children but had come to collect her because there had been a break-in at their house in Gweru. She then told him to wait until the end of the service so that they would discuss this further. She then confided in her friend Samkeliso Sivanda about what her ex-husband had told her but Samkeliso warned her not to leave before the church ended so that they could go together. After the church service ended, Lizzie, Edmo and Samkeliso walked together towards the village. Samkeliso walked in front of the exes to allow them to have private conversations so she did not hear what they were talking about. After walking a few kilometers, a scotch cart passed them and Samkeliso asked for a ride. Edmo, however, discouraged his ex-wife from getting into the scotch cart together with Samkeliso so the scotch cart left without Lizzie. It is unclear what triggered his anger but Edmo attacked his ex-wife and stabbed her 12 times on the right side of her neck and face. When he saw that she had died, he then threw her in the stream and fled from the scene. At sunset, Office Amos Mpofu, Lizzie's father, was very worried that his daughter was yet to return from church, so he went and looked for some Kenny who informed him that she had left her with her ex-husband. He then went to the last place that some Kenny so said that they had parted ways but could not find anything. He knew that if she had decided to get back together with her ex-husband, she would have informed him before leaving. Early the next morning, some Kenny so was woken up by the tragic news of Liz's demise. When the police arrived at the scene, they had no doubt that this had been a homicide. There were signs of struggle to show that she had fought until the very end. She had died due to hemorrhagic shock because of multiple neck stabbings. The metal weapon was still lodged in her cheek and when the police officer tried to remove it, only the handle came off to show just how much pressure had been applied during the stabbing. Kelly so then informed the police that she had last seen her friend with her ex-husband when she got into the scorch cart. The father also told the police that Edmo had spoken to one of Lizzie's sisters. She's the one that had directed him to the church. So it was clear as day that Edmo was the number one suspect in the murder of Lizzie Mpofu. When the police tracked him down to his house in Guero, they found out that he had changed addresses. They failed to capture him for the next four years and had to close his docket. They only received a tip about his whereabouts four years later in 2014 and they captured him. When the detectives questioned him, he played innocent. He denied ever being in Gai in December 2011. He claimed that he had last seen her in 2009 when she had left him from Gai with his children. He also said that he moved addresses because he could no longer afford to pay rent. In court, however, testimonies from some Kelly's and office confirmed that he had indeed he had been in Gai on the 2nd of December in 2011. Office also disputed his claim that he had last seen his family in 2009, telling the court that he had visited his children multiple times during the years. The father of the deceased also confirmed that he had stopped visiting or calling his family ever since Lizzie died. The police then took him to the crime scene where he pointed out exactly where he had stabbed Lizzie to death. Although all the evidence that was presented in court was circumstantial, the judge, Justice Moyer, found 
found him guilty of murder with actual intent and sentenced him to life imprisonment on the 11th of November in 2015. She said the only reason why he had a knife was because he had planned to kill her. No one would go and visit their loved one with a knife unless they have ulterior motives. This was further substantiated by the amount of times that he had stabbed her. The area in which he had stabbed her, he had targeted vital blood vessels on her neck, making sure that she would die. My personal opinion is that he had tried to get back together with his ex-wife but she was unwilling, so he carried the knife in order to threaten her to go back with him but when she refused, he then decided to kill her in a fit of rage. I think the lesson from this case is that we should never be alone with our toxic exes. If there are things that we need to solve or things that we need to address, we need to bring other people in that conversation. It's high time that men start to accept rejection and move on with their lives. May her soul continue to rest in eternal peace. Don't forget to watch my other video right here. Ciao.